In a previous video, I built an app to tell this synthesizer to play notes. I'll link to that one at the end of this video. But we can also send information the other way and get the synthesizer to tell our laptop to do things, which means we can do something really cool. So let's get into it. I guess I'm gonna need a synthesizer, but where could I possibly get a synthesizer? Ah, here's one. Much better. But now we have this hole. One sec. Problem solved. Wait, what are we doing? That's right, the video. Well, now we have a sound. But what are we gonna do with it? Well, let's start with an empty project so we can see there's nothing in this folder. And we're going to use Claude to build a game. This is the first time I've opened Claude in this folder, so I'm gonna say yes to give Claude access to this folder. Now, rather than telling Claude to just go and build the whole game, we wanna come up with a really detailed plan first, and Claude can actually help us with that. Write a detailed plan to build a 2D platformer game similar to early Mario games. And let's see what Claude comes up with. And it looks like we have a very detailed plan where it's described the technical architecture, and then we're describing some core game features. So what the character can do, the environment that it exists within, the physics of the game, the design of the levels, the structure for our project, and then it's broken this work up into different phases. So this project is now very clearly defined. Us and Claude now have a very good shared understanding of what we're trying to build and it's even been broken up into these different phases, so we can now get Claude to zoom in on each of those phases individually and implement them. So let's do exactly that. Looks great, please implement phase one. Now remember, this is a super basic phase where we just want to draw something on the screen and make sure everything's working. So Claude is asking if I want to create this index.html file. Now we are going to be creating and tinkering with a lot of files in this project. And so I'm actually going to say yes, and don't ask me again for this session. So I'm essentially giving Claude permission to just go wild and do whatever it wants in this specific directory. So proceed with caution. Okay, phase one is now complete. We have a canvas with a little red rectangle and we can open up this index.html file in a browser. And <laughs> that's actually much more detailed than I was expecting. It does say use the arrow keys or WASD to move and jump, which it doesn't yet, but that's fine because that was phase two, but this is looking great. So let's say to Claude, this looks Great, please implement phase two. And so by breaking it up into these different phases, we can make sure each one of them is working the way we expect before we move on to the next one. And phase two is complete, let's check it out. So visually, it looks the same, but now we can move left and right and we have gravity. All right, this is looking awesome. So let's implement phase three. And now we have some platforms which we can't actually reach. So we can ask Claude to fix that, the character, cannot actually jump up onto the platforms. Now I could have been a little bit more detailed with this and explained that it was probably because of the height of the platforms, but let's see what Claude does. And it looks like Claude is blaming itself for its complex collision function, which I don't think was the problem, but let's go and refresh. And we still can't, whoop, oh, we can jump onto that platform. <laughs> It's very glitchy. <laughs> okay, let's say the collision logic was okay. The platforms are just a little bit too high for the character to jump onto. And once again, Claude says, I'm absolutely right. So positive. And this is looking uh, much nicer, a little bit easy. Uh, we've still got that glitch, but that's okay. So let's just say implement the remainder of the phases. So the basic logic of the game is good. We just want it to look a little nicer. <laughs> And there's my little character. And it looks like it's got animated sprites moving left and right. And we've got a side scrolling camera. So cool. So let's add some enemies and make it possible for the character to shoot musical notes, tally up the user's score and show this somewhere on the screen. <laughs> ah, look at those enemies. And look at those musical notes. We're imbuing them all with the power of melody. Ah! Now, once you don't have any enemies, I don't know how you actually lose these lives. 
But regardless, we want to take this score and save it in a database. So I'm thinking like a classic arcade game, when the game ends, you can enter in three characters that are like your initials or some swear word you've managed to spell, and then it will save that on a leaderboard and you can see the top three scores. So we're gonna need a database to store that information. And so we're going to use Superbase, or even cooler than that, we're gonna give Claude access to our Superbase account so Claude can create a database for us. And we're gonna do that using Superbase's MCP server. So this is the Superbase docs page for MCP. There'll be a link down below. And step one is to create a personal access token. So we can head over to our Superbase settings and generate a new token. This one's gonna be called Super Mario. And I'm going to generate that token and then copy that new token into my clipboard and head back over to the Superbase docs to see what I need to do with it. So step two is to configure our AI tool. So we've got cursor, windsurf, VS code, Klein, Claude desktop, and then Claude code. So we need to create a .mcp.json file. So let's exit out of Claude code, open this one up in VS code, create a .mcp.json file, and then we'll paste in our access token and go back over to the docs, copy the rest of this configuration, and then back to VS code and paste it in, then take our access token and replace our personal access token here, give it a save, and we can even quit VS code, actually, before we quit VS Code, we wanna make sure we create a .git ignore file and add our .mcp.json file because this mcp.json file contains this access token which we do not want to commit to version control. We do not wanna push this up to GitHub and make it public. But now we can head back over to our terminal and run Claude again. And this has detected a new MCP server. So we're gonna say use this and all future MCP servers in this project. And now we can say using the Superbase MCP server, create a new Superbase project. And so what MCP does is gives Claude the ability to use additional tools. And so in this case, we've given it a collection of tools or functions that it can call to interact with Superbase. So this is saying, would you like to run the list organizations tool, which we do, so we'll say yes. It then sees we've got a collection of organizations which this project could belong to. I'm just gonna say one, which is my default organization. It's asking what we would like to name the project. I'm pretty happy with that super Mario pun I just came up with. It's now going to get the cost of creating this new project, which we can see is $0 monthly. So free is pretty good. So I'm gonna say yes, proceed. And now it's just confirming that we want to create this project in this organization and that we understand that it will be free. Awesome, so it's created a new project and the status is already active healthy, which means this Superbase project is up and running and ready to use. But before we jump into it, we're just going to copy our project's ID, go back over to VS Code, and then rather than giving Claude access to our entire Superbase account, we want to scope this down to just a specific project ref, which is going to be that new project. And so let's get Claude to implement our scores and leaderboard. So we can say, when the game ends, allow the user to enter in three characters as their name and save their score in Superbase. After the end game screen, show a leaderboard of the top three users who have the highest score. So we're just using Superbase to store some data. Every Superbase project comes with a Postgres database, but we also have access to the entire Superbase stack. So if we wanted to add authentication to our application, we could. If we wanted to store some files, we could put them in Superbase storage. If we wanted to create an edge function to handle some other use case, we could do that. If we wanted to subscribe to real-time subscription so we could see what other players were doing in this game, we could do that. We can use as much or as little of that Superbase project as we need for our application. So Claude has written a bunch of SQL for us. It's using migrations to keep a track of each of those changes. And so it's asking if we want to create this table for high scores and enable row level security to make sure users can only select or insert scores. So they won't be able to update or delete them, which is good. So yes, we want to proceed and it wants to get our project URL. So let's say yes and get our non key to connect our game to our Superbase project. It wants to update the HTML file and some CSS and the JavaScript. And so the functionality of the game is the same. Now that we've actually got a score, let's jump into this guy a couple of times and we got a new high score. Let's be sensible while the video is recording and say John and then submit my score of 200 and check it out, I'm on the leaderboard. So let's continue and let's 
Get some more points. Come on. This game's pretty hard. <laughs> yes. All right, and this time we got 300 points. So let's say Nudge and submit. And now Nudge is at the top of our leaderboard with second place going to John. And if we head over to our Superbase project and look at the table editor, we can see our table for high scores and see this data is persisting in our database. And so time to answer the question that I'm sure is overflowing in the comments right now. Why do we have this synthesizer here? Well, I wanted to make the most expensive game controller ever made. So when I press a note, I want the character to jump. And then when I press another note, I want them to move left. Another note, move right. So let's add MIDI to our game so we can use this synthesizer to control our character. So let's go back over to Claude and say, I have a synthesizer plugged into my computer via MIDI. I want to use this as a controller for the game. When the game starts, present the user with a screen where they can choose their controller, either a keyboard or a MIDI device. If they choose MIDI device, this should scan all available MIDI devices on their computer. When they select a MIDI device, step through each of the controls for the character. So ask the user to press a key for jump and then one for left, one for right, etc. Once they've assigned a note for every control, start the game. All right, let's see how Claude goes with this. It's doing some research to discover that it needs to use the web MIDI API and created itself a to-do list for all the different steps to implement this properly. It's then working its way through each of these steps one by one. Now there's probably gonna be a lot of steps and I don't wanna just keep saying yes, 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 yes. So again, I'm just gonna say yes for everything in this session. <laughs> That's pretty cool. We now have this awesome choose your controller screen. So let's say MIDI device, and then this has prompted us to allow access to scan for MIDI devices. So let's say allow, and then this has detected all of the devices I have plugged in that support MIDI and even the company that makes them. That's pretty cool. So this is a Korg multi-poly. So let's select that. And we're now mapping our controls. So let's say we want this one for jump and then move left, move right, uh, and shoot. And now I need to remember what they were. <laughs> uh, that is cool. I should have made these much more sensible. Also, I don't appear to have any enemies, so cannot actually die. But that is so cool. Let's refresh, select MIDI again, allow those devices, choose our multi-poly, and then we can choose a major chord for this one. <gasps> I found an enemy. They are buggy. I can't, I can't quite get it. <sighs> come out, come out. No, 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 no. <laughs> I gotta learn my scales to be able to play this game. Yes! Now I'm, I don't know how to die. That is so cool. <laughs> but I think this demonstrates just how powerful AI is getting. There's no way I could build this thing on my own. Well, maybe I could, but there's no way I could justify the amount of time it would take for me to build this on my own. Adding enemies and physics and MIDI integration so I could play it with a synth, that would take me weeks. But here, I've been able to spit out a pretty good proof of concept in minutes. But if you wanna see me build something legitimately useful, then check out this video right here. I use Lovable to build an app that can send MIDI information to this synth. Well, not this synth, but a similar synth. And by the end of the video, have produced an album-ready banger. But until next time, keep building cool stuff.